Good morning, church, and welcome to our online services for February 2022. We've got some great news, but firstly, just a reminder that the pastoral care team are back on board going forward this week. So if you need to talk to any of the pastors or elders, you can contact them on the newsletter, which is online, or contact the church office, which is open on weekdays. So I've got um, a great announcement, but I need to read it because it's Pastor Lloyd's words. So just bear with me. I need my reading glasses. We are planning to start church services in our church on February the 20th at 10 a.m. This will include a concurrent service for up to 100 people in our church auditorium who are vaccinated and up to 25 in our cafe who are unvaccinated. The two parts of the building will be kept separate using their own entrances and bathrooms which will be clearly marked. We will not be able to have beverages after church. We're hoping also to screen a live YouTube of the service at the same time for any who cannot attend. If you are attending the service in the auditorium, you will need to show your vaccine pass or you can go round to the cafe. Mask wearing is also encouraged, but not necessary for the people on stage. We will update this again next week. Please plan to come and be patient and adaptable so we can finally get to meet up together again. That's a direct quote from Pastor Lloyd. Yay. And now we just want to um, pray for those who have birthdays and um, anniversaries. But I'd just like to read a scripture and then we'll just go straight on to prayer for you. So this is um, Isaiah chapter 12, and there's nothing better than to open the Bible and read his word as it is. Um, it's different from hearing it audibly, so I invite you to read along with me. I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely... God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. So, Father, we just give you thanks that you are our Lord, that you're no longer angry at us, Lord, but Jesus has given us favour before you. Father, that we can trust you and not be afraid, and that you are our strength and defence. And we just give you glory and thanks for everything that you do. You are our mighty God. And Father, we just ask that you just pour out your blessings now on everyone watching, and a special blessing for the birthdays and anniversaries. And Father, thank you that you are with us. And Lord, just be with those who are in need, who need healing, or feel lonely. Lord, just let them know your presence. And we just give you thanks and glory. And bless us all, protect us and guide us through the week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, church, and have a great week. These are the days of Elijah 
declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. Though these are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, so we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. So lift your voice, it's a year of Jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Yeah. These are the days of Ezekiel. The dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet's call. So lift your voice, it's a year of jubilee. Until salvation comes Behold, behold, he comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet's call So lift your voice It's a year of jubilee Out of Zion till salvation comes Who was and who is And who is to come God like Jehovah. There's no 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 God like Jehovah. Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, riding like the sun at the trumpet's call. So lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion till salvation comes. Out of Zion till salvation comes. Out of Zion till salvation comes. Well, good morning, Ronnie family, and welcome to our morning service this morning. Uh, isn't it great news uh, from what we've heard from Kristen this morning about coming together soon? So we're really, really looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to seeing one another and fellowshipping together in our building here uh, on that day. So looking forward to that. This morning I'm going to be uh, talking about the promises of the coming of Christ. The promises of the coming of Christ. And... Um, I just wanted to speak on this just to uh, encourage us and to prepare ourselves, look at ourselves and prepare ourselves because he is coming very, very soon. We don't know when, but we need to be prepared uh, for his coming. So that is my message this morning. So good morning to you all. And the text for our message today is taken from the book of Second Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read from verses 3 and 4, and then we're going to skip down to verses 8, 9, and 10, okay? So if you haven't got your Bibles, that's okay. Just follow me as we go along. So many people today uh, think that planet Earth is going nowhere. And people want to tell you that history is going and taking us nowhere. But I'd like to remind us, family, that history is taking us somewhere. Amen? It's taken us to that moment in time that God has decreed and ordained. When Jesus Christ shall come again, hallelujah, 
And this time, not to a manger as a little baby, but coming in power and great, great glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's read from our text this morning from Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. And it goes like this. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now let's move down to verses 8, 9, and 10. And it reads this. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Let us pray. Heavenly, eternal, mighty Father God, we, we bless your holy word and name this morning. We live in times of uncertainty and times, Lord, where people are unsure. This morning, as we examine and learn your scriptures in truth, May you bring certainty to every heart and life this morning, Lord. And as we look into your promises, may they inspire us and lift us and help us to be ready when you return, Lord Jesus. In your wonderful, mighty name we pray. Amen. The world we're living in right now, family, is a raging ocean. Storms are battering and damaging, and they're also threatening. Our world, as we all know it, is not an attractive place to live, and you'd all agree, or a place to be. Volcanoes are erupting in certain areas, places at the moment, as we know. Tonga, for instance. Earthquakes, bushfires, and floodings in some areas of the world. Droughts and rising global temperatures, melting ice caps, rising sea levels, atmospheric pollution contributing each year to thousands and tens of thousands of deaths. Scientists have said that we have just 10 years left to save our planet. That's what the scientists are saying. And that so many species of life are on the verge of extinction. They're telling us not the warning of preachers, Christian preachers, but the warning of scientists, educated men and educated women, but frightened men and frightened women saying, we have just 10 years to save the planet. What about the global pandemic? that we're in now, economies destroyed, health services collapsing, and on top of that, a new Cold War with Russia's Putin's and China's increasing militarization of Asia, a new armed race with even more powerful nuclear weapons. It's evil that Russia is calling her latest missile, wait for this, wait for it, here it comes. Some of you already know. They're calling their latest missile the Satan III missile. The Satan III missile. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this morning, that's the world we are living in today. China's threat to invade Taiwan. Russia's threat to overrun the Ukraine. 
not to mention the ongoing civil war in Syria and the Iranian threat to one day wipe Israel off the Middle Eastern map. Wow. The rise of militant Islam. And look at Afghanistan with the mess caused by America and her allies. Jesus warned in Matthew chapter 24. He warned, There shall be wars and rumors of wars, and nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. There shall be famines, there shall be pestilences, and there shall be earthquakes. And then he says, And these are the beginnings of sorrow. These are the beginning of sorrows. Friends and family today, we are no longer looking for the signs of his coming. But we are now looking at the signs of his coming. Amen? Hallelujah. In the storms battering our world today, I suggest to you that we need a refuge. We need a refuge, and I suggest to you that we need a place of safety and a place of security. Amen? Hallelujah. If you don't know it yet, you might ask, Ty, is there such a place? Is there such a place, brother? I say to you, yes, yes, and yes, and a thousand times yes. And that place of safety, sir, madam, brother, sister, is the promises that God who cannot lie the promises that God has made in his word. In particular, the promises relating to the return on our topic this morning, to the return and second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you say, praise the Lord? Yes, I can hear you say it. Scream it out, praise the Lord. I will say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. It's exciting, isn't it? I want to tell you, friend, this morning that the world is preparing for the worst. The world is preparing for the worst. But hallelujah today, you and I are getting ready for the best. Amen? (laughs) We are getting ready for the best. And we need to talk to others too in regards to to what we are waiting for, what we're looking for, the coming of Christ Jesus, which is the best. Hallelujah. I want you to be reassured today that Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen? It's more than hoping and trusting that he will come again. Be reassured that Jesus Christ, 100%, is coming again in mighty, awesome Power. He's coming to make a new heaven and a new earth and to rule and set up his kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited? Yes, you are. I'm excited. We all should be excited. So what about these promises of his coming? Let's look at those. And where can we find these promises? Well, first of all, the Old Testament prophets, they prophesied about his coming. And not only did they prophesy about his first coming, but his his second coming as well. The manner of his conception and birth and the location of his birth, the ministry that he would exercise, his death and resurrection from the dead. And every uh, eye, every single thing that those prophets foretold about his first coming was fulfilled, amen, 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, and young people, young people this morning, on that basis, we have confidence today to be sure that every single thing they would say, the the old prophets would say concerning his second coming, that those things would also be fulfilled totally and completely, amen? Amen. Let me give an example of two of the Old Testament prophets, in case some of you are wondering, oh, where, where does it say that in the Old Testament time? Two 
of the Old Testament prophets. First of all, the prophet Zechariah. We read in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 and verse 4. Listen to this. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Now, now listen. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two. Zechariah the prophet spoke of this. We haven't yet seen it because Christ hasn't come yet, but he prophesied it from back in the day. Zechariah. Here's Zechariah some 400 plus years before Christ's first coming. He tells us the precise location where Jesus will return to when he returns the second, second time round. He says, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. The Apostle Peter, quoting the Old Testament prophet Joel, in his day of Pentecost, uh, in his day of Pentecost sermon, when he was doing a sermon on Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapors of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. What did he just say the day of the Lord is going to be like? It's going to be great. That's what it's going to be like. And it's going to be awesome. Will you say praise Jesus? Come on, somebody. Family and friends, the Old Testament prophets foretold and promised Christ's coming. Amen. Amen. And then we, we will step over to the New Testament. And the New Testament apostles promised Christ's second coming as well. So let's start with James, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. In James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, he says this, Therefore, be, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord establish or strengthen your hearts. Don't let your hearts be traumatized. Don't let your hearts be troubled or in, in panic mode. No, he says, don't let establish your hearts. He says, establish your heart or strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Hallelujah. Now let's listen to the Apostle Peter, chapter 3, verse, verse 10. He says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. Great noise. Friend, there'll be nothing secret about it. It will happen with a great noise, says Peter. And then in verse 13, he says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for new heavens and a new earth in which, not sin, not sin, but in which righteousness dwells. What's James saying here? What's Peter saying here? They're telling you and I, they're telling us that Christ has promised to come again. Amen. Oh, yes, he is coming again. Now, Jude, another half-brother of the Lord Jesus, in verses 14 and 15 of his chapter, he says, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000s of his saints to execute judgment on all who are ungodly. And now we'll listen to what Apostle John says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. He says this, Behold, he is coming with clouds. Listen. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes, meaning all the peoples of the earth, will mourn because of him. Will mourn because of him. Let's just pause there for a second. Why mourn at his coming? 
Why mourn at his coming? Because they are not ready. They will mourn because they are not ready. Listen again to John in Revelation 19, verses 11 and 14. He says this, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. Who's that? The Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. And then John notes, And the armies of heaven clothed in fine white linen and clean, here we go, followed him. That be you and me. Amen. Amen. And the armies of heaven clothed in fine white linen and clean followed him. Wow. That's beautiful. And you might say, Ty, that sounds as if there are, they're gonna be, there's going to be an invasion from outer space or something. Now, let me tell you something this morning. Brothers and sisters, you are spot on. Because Christ and his angels will come from another place. They're coming from another realm. They're coming here. Where he will set up his kingdom and rule all the universe. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're not looking forward to aliens with big heads and big black eyes. No. <laughs> no. We're looking forward to the coming of Christ. He will be coming on the clouds, and he will meet us in the air, and we will be with him forever and forevermore. Hallelujah. John is giving us more promises of Christ's return. Then the apostle Paul, the chief of the apostles, we've heard, we've all heard this verse many times, and I've quoted this verse at some funerals that I've taken in the past. Listen to what Paul says. First Thessalonians chapter 4, for the Lord himself, for the Lord himself. Now, listen, the Lord himself, he's coming personally. It's not another, uh, you know, clone of him or anything, all right? It is the Lord Jesus himself. He will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. That's you and I, brothers and sisters. Keep running the race. Keep focusing and fixing your eyes on Jesus till the end. Come on. Amen. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And forever we shall be with him from then on. Now, did you notice that verse? The shout and the blast of the trumpet. Ain't nothing secret, nothing quiet about that coming, is there? Like some other beliefs, I won't mention any, any denomination or whatever. They believe that he's already been. He, and he came uh, spiritually, didn't come physically. The Bible tells us otherwise. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, that verse it's probably the, the noisiest verse in the whole Bible, would you believe? You'd agree with me. Yes, it would be the, the noisiest verse in the whole Bible. And nobody will miss the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Paul says again, in, uh, this time in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then also in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul gives us another promise and says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Hallelujah. Here's the promises, brothers and sisters, this morning of his coming. We have the Old Testament prophets promising. Then we have the New Testament apostles promising. But even the early church itself believed in the promises of Christ's return. And do you know how they greeted each other? I know a lot of, a lot, some of, uh, well, a lot of you would know this. Do you know how they used to greet each other back in the day? Before the pandemic, 
We'd all give each other a big sweaty hugs and high fives and, and whatever. Well, that wasn't how they greeted each other in the early church. No fist pumps, no elbowing, or whatever else we do now. No, nope, none of those. You know what they, how they greeted each other? They greeted each other with one word. I think I heard somebody yell it out. Yeah. <laughs> one word. And that word is Maranatha or Maranatha. M-A-R-A-N-A-T-H-A. Maranatha. One of my favorite uh, group that I love listening to their worship is called Maranatha. Maranatha, which means, behold, the Lord comes. That's what Maranatha means. And they used to greet each other like that. Maranatha, John. Maranatha, Joe. Maranatha, um, whoever else. <laughs> yeah? Behold, the Lord comes. Or in Aramaic, our Lord has come. Our Lord has come. And that's, what, that's how they used to greet each other. Maranatha. Behold, the Lord comes. Our Lord has come. Amen. The early church believed in the promises of his coming. Friends, can I ask you, do you believe in the promises of his coming? And are those promises inspiring you? Are they causing you to be awakened and get excited? Are they causing you to walk close with him? And you know something else? Are you ready for this one? The very angels had promised that Christ will come again. Oh, where's that? You might ask, Ty. Where, where's that? Show us where, where the angels promised that Christ will come again. Turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 11. It says, this is what it says. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus and his disciples are standing on the Mount of Olives, the place where he will set foot on again, as we read before, on his return. On the Mount of Olives. And they, and they over, uh, overlooking Jerusalem, and in front of the disciples, Jesus begins to ascend into heaven, and a cloud receiving him out of their sight. And as they watch, we're told, here we go, two angels appeared next to them, and said these words, You men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Listen, this same Jesus, they said, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come back in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Hallelujah and amen. Are you ready for his return, Fano? People, brothers and sisters, are you ready? Are we ready? Am I ready? I'm preaching to myself as well, guys. We're all in this together, and we need to be ready. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Some, some might say, oh, how can I? Oh, I am ready. I'm still drinking, I'm still, you know, fornicating, I'm still doing my life as God has offered me in life. I'm ready, man. No, you're not. You need to overcome and give up that sin right now. I warn you, give it up. Whatever it is that is not of God, give it up. It is all part of being prepared and getting ready for Christ's coming. Because if he comes and finds you in your sin such as that, you will not make it. So please. Look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Talk to a brother or sister. Am I doing this? Is, this? is this the right thing to do as I'm walking with Christ? Come for help. Ask somebody. Make sure that you are ready. He doesn't want to find any sin in us. You know, do the best we can. He understands our hearts. He loves you unconditionally. Well, there are conditions, but he loves you nevertheless. Amen. Amen. And finally, the Lord Jesus himself, the Lord himself has promised that he will return. <laughs> and that's the main promise we want to hear. 
uh, it's okay listening to the old church and the, uh, you know, the apostles and the, 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 the guys in the past. But Jesus, when he says, I'm coming back, you better believe it. You better believe it. He has promised that he will return. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 and 31, he says this. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. And listen again to Jesus in John chapter 14 in the upper room before he goes out to the garden of Gethsemane. He says this, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, listen, I will come again. Hallelujah. I will come again. How's that for a promise, guys? How's that for a promise? I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting? Looking at what we are about to, to, to experience when he comes back. It's going to be awesome out of this world. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. How beautiful. So come on, guys. Let's continue and let's prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Jesus is, is telling you and I this morning, family, that he's coming again. Now, I can't stop st stressing that because that's my message. <laughs> Jesus is coming again. Will you say amen? Here's one more verse. One more verse. Again, Jesus in Mark 8, chapter 8, verse 38. He says this, whoever, listen, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man will also be ashamed. Brother, friend, I know a lot of our Christians, our brothers and sisters in the Lord, we're not ashamed of him. No, no, no. We love him. We love him and, and we just adore him. But if there's someone out there who's listening to me this morning and you've been cussing his name and, and, and calling him this and whatever, and you're ashamed of him, please, real simply, come to Christ. Come to Christ, brother. Talk to somebody and come to him before it's too late. I'll read that again. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Wow. Friends, friends and family this morning, the promises of his coming you've heard from the Old Testament prophets, from the apostles, from the early church, the angels even, and then from Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior himself, has said that he is coming again. Hallelujah. What a wonderful, mighty day that's going to be. And in conclusion, I'll say this. That in the uncertainty of our world today, these promises from both the Old and the New Testaments should be our hope and our comfort. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'll say again that Jesus is coming again. Jesus Christ is coming. So let's get ready and get right with God before he does. Amen? Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, it's so exciting. Lord, if I was to prepare a message for two days on this topic or whatever, Father, wouldn't it be, oh, it would be just so awesome and people would listen and your Holy Spirit would speak through us 
whoever it might be, Pastor Lloyd, myself, other, other preachers, other men of God who, who preach your word and love you, Father. It's just amazing. It's so wonderful to know that you are coming again and, and that you are our hope. You are the one that we're looking forward to. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for all your promises of, of Jesus' return. And we especially pray for your help in preparing us to be ready when he does appear on that wonderful, mighty day. We thank you, Lord. Help us in our walk. Help us with this pandemic. Take away the fears and the worries that some of us are struggling with. And we just commit each other to you. Ask your Holy Spirit to come and continue to fill us daily and help us to keep our focus, our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. In your wonderful, mighty name we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless. And thank you again for watching this morning. Stay safe until we gather together again, as it was mentioned this morning. Isn't that exciting? So looking forward to seeing you and uh, fellowshipping with you together in the name of Jesus. Bye for now. Cast my mind on Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone
Come on now. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. 